Hello, my name is Greg Malone. Um, I'm flint napper, at least I try to be. Um, flint napping some percussion, and I have a piece of uh, Novaculite with some nice staining. It's a nice, pretty stuff. Kind of a pinkish hue, a little bit of white near the cortex, some grays on the outside here. You can see some oxidation over the surface here. This is real pretty here. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but anyway. Some nice stuff. I'm going to try to get a decent sized point out of here. This is probably, oh, from end to end, probably about 9 inches, 8 to 9 inches, end to end. You can see the span of my hand there. And I use, the tools I use are uh, copper, aluminum, uh, antler, um, but mainly copper and aluminum to reduce my blades down. And uh, this is one of my boppers. This is a old heating uh, element for soldering years ago. That's what used to heat these with a blowtorch, and then they would solder with them. This had a handle coming out of it, out of this end of it. But that's solid copper, and that weighs, I believe, uh, had a... Yeah, there's a number six right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Right there, it says number six. So that weighs, I'm batting close to six pounds. It's heavy. It's solid copper. Now when I get done, I want to end up with something that looks kind of like this. Okay. Uh, this is very fat. In fact, this is more of a preform than it is a finished piece. This is one I knocked out the other day, so... Uh, just so you can see what I'm trying to make, trying to come up with. I love making um, those types of points, uh, what I call um, turkey tails. They're a tang. This is a large, like, ulu style turkey tail. And it's got some nice polka dot on it. And again, that ulu shape for chopping. You can chop in a bowl with that. Hang them around your neck. I've got one around my neck right now made out of uh, Novaculite. I'm going to get my beard out of the way. You can see this has some very nice dendrites in it. These little tree-like structure. If you look up dendrite in the Google, you'll find it. It's about uh, six and a half inches long. Very nice piece. I love them. Love to wear them. And this is what I hope to come out with with this piece right here so now I need to look at platforms and where to hit anything that's 70 degrees and lower I can hit and drive a flake I can drive a flake past some concavity like right here that dips down and then I go to a convexity which is this rounded shape here see how this is humped so I can hit low here, or just chip off a little bit of that, and then strike off a flake all the way down there. So let's give that a try. I have different types of boppers. This is a lead-weighted bopper I got from a uh, Dave Parker, I believe, and it works really well, lead-weighted. Uh, this is just a uh, cap off a copper pipe. Uh, looks like about an inch and a quarter. And I put some JB Weld under that and put it on an oak rod. And uh, this is for thinning. I got this from Curtis Smith. Worked great for hitting and, and thinning a blade out. You take a blade like this and then hit it right here on the edge. Set up your platform. It'll put the nicest flake off of there. Beautiful looking flake. So just so you can see what I'm doing here, uh, we're going to do some quick reduction. Start out with this heavy bopper, and then we'll go to a smaller piece. So I'm going to knock. Remember, I've got at least a 70% uh, grade. Now, remember where that used to dip right there? It doesn't dip anymore because I chipped it off. Now it's kind of straight. Now I can hit along here and take this whole ridge off, or most of it. I use an abrader. Again, bought this from Curtis Smith. And uh, the abrader... All I'm going to do with it is actually help to raise my edge a little bit more. Strengthen the edge. When you grind along it like this, you make little fish or little scrapes in the edge. 
and that when the flake breaks off it allows it to break on those little scratches and then I also strengthen the ridge I'm starting to going to pop down here and shoot down because I want the, the the thing to go a long way so I'm going to hit right about here and hopefully I can drive this thing off all the way down to this other end so here goes nothing I'm going to use a piece of uh, buckskin leather so this flake will stay with the piece and you guys can see I'm going to support it here on the back I'm really not even going to put my fingers under here I'm just going to support with a finger here and a finger here so I leave that that supported I'm going to hit it here and I'm not even going to lay it on my leg because I, if I lay it on my leg it'll cause the flake to drive up into the piece and it'll it'll uh, stall out on me so I want it to shoot from end to end so here goes nothing first swing of the night there we go what happened is what I wanted to have happen in fact a lot better than what I wanted to have happen remember I showed you this ridge I wanted to shoot down here and what happened is it did shot down that ridge I would have rather kept that flake into one piece and it also shot another flake off this edge and actually thinned me up now I can make a little blade out of that I'm going to save that in my pile but you see I took all that mass off of there and we started thinning this out down we're going to try to make a nice blade again look at the colors I we've got a little bit of a uh, healed cracks that go in here a little bit a little bit healed cracks so that kind of interfered with the wave it also shot all the way across is which is what I wanted to do so that's pretty cool I'm going to hit another one here and try to come down through here and take a lot of this junk off. So again, I'm going to set this up. What I'm doing right now is taking very thin flakes off the edge. Again, to give me some convexity. And I can only hit into a convex shape. I can't hit into a concave shape because if I do, it'll, it'll step and break off on me. So I can hit here and knock this hump off. Strengthen her up, make her good and strong. Okay, so I'm going to hit right here and blow this all off here. And you can see, I'm really rounding that edge off right there. And I'm going to hit with my bopper. I'm going to hit with the end right here on the end and then shoot it back down over that hump. Okay. So a lot of it got blown off there, but you can see what happened here where I hit that chunk and it just kind of blew right down that lip, which is what I wanted to do. And again, making it flatter and flatter as we go. So I'm going to hit another one right here and blow some more of this cortex off over here. I'm going to hit right here and drive her down. And once again, going to very much abrade this because I want it good and strong and I want it to shoot down just like that. There we go. Okay. And you can see kind of what I did when I hit it. Anyway, uh, you can see what it took off there it's kind of really choppy here you can see these little cracks that come in and that is causing it to get pretty choppy I've got a heater going here and it's about scorching my leg okay I took a look at this and what I'm gonna do is shoot from this side back across here and take off some of this junk I've got a square edge here which I've got a taper and I can taper that by doing what's there they call ziglet zigzagging I go back and forth and I zigzag so I took those flakes off that'll make a nice point right there and I'm gonna zig back zigzag back the opposite way okay and that whole square edge that I had on there is now gone and now I've got some really nice points to hit 
to drive to take a lot of this junk off. So I'm going to hit this one right here and take a lot of the squiggly line stuff over here by hitting off that platform. Now Curtis Smith taught me to abrade in this direction when you're shooting a flake off. And that way it helps to set up your platform, it helps to set up your edge geometry. And there's a whole lot of stuff. Check out Paleo Man 52. It's got a bunch of really good stuff on here. Okay, I'm going to hit right here. And I'm going to drive down and take a lot of this steppy, choppy stuff off here. You can see how choppy it is right there. Hit right here, okay? There goes nothing. Once again, just supporting on this back edge, I want to leave this untouched so it shoots. Okay. Okay, so what I did was, I actually did a really good thing. I actually hit across here, and it wrapped around and overshot, but it took all this junk off I wanted to take off anyway. So it really, that one hit right there just did me a ton of good. So uh, very, very cool. You can see where it wrapped around to that far edge on the opposite side, but it took off a whole ton of material when I hit that. So really good platform, really good flake, and again, I can make a nice piece out of that. So you can see we're starting to get a really nice preform. Hit this right here, take some of this off. One of the secrets to success, and there's a lot of different rules and regulations of this, and if you don't follow them, you'll get the result you deserve, <laughs> which is a busted piece. And that might happen to me. But uh, if you hit past, like this is my center line right here, imaginary center line. This is below the center line, so when I hit that, that should blow all this crap off here pretty cool. So let's try it again. This time I'm setting it against my leg because I don't want to travel all the way over to the other side like that last one did. I want to kind of stop the flake. Okay. So here we go. And this is what happened. So you can see where I hit it. And it just blew my flake and just feathered out really nice. Kind of chattered there, but it, it just thinned out that whole hump right there. Got a little hump here. I'm going to hit this, but not so hard. I'm going to braid it. Once again, like Curtis Smith said, we need to stroke that way. You don't want to go the opposite direction. And just a small hit right here. Okay, took off some of it. And that's what I want to do. This is what's called a blender. I didn't want to just reduce a ton. I wanted to blend the flake in. That's what I wanted to do. Now I've got quite a large hump coming this way. So I can hit right here and take a lot of this hump off. Again, we're going to be really careful that we don't overshoot and don't blow this off. So we're plenty light on our ends. I'm going to start taking this hump off this side now. Okay. I'm going to hit right here, drive down, and take a lot of this mass off over here. Hitting right there. Once again, strengthen up our edge. Now, when I'm abrading with this thing, sparks are flying. If, this, if I was doing this in the dark, I don't know if you can see right where it's being abraded. But uh, sparks are flying off there um, because of the flint-type material. So I'm going to hit right here. And drive down this ridge right here from this location. I'll leave it on my leg because I don't want it to shoot all the way down and across. Okay. So, what I did was, remember that I told you I was going to hit that edge? And I want to take this hump off. Well, that's the hump. Took all that off. And one flake from here, almost all the length, that's about... A good five inch flake I shot off of there. So you can shoot a flake a long way with the proper weight. And uh, again, it's going to make another beautiful little knife right there. You can make a nice knife out of that. Okay, so that we did that, shot down. Now we're going to hit it here and we're going to shoot down this ridge. We're just going to use our next ridge. 
I know there's people that say, you know, you shouldn't shoot one flake so close to the other. But when you're doing heavy reduction like we're doing here right now with this preform, it's okay. You can get away with it. All right. So this is where we're going to hit right here. And we're going to shoot down this ridge right there. Again, I'm going to leave it on the pad. And uh, I'm going to support it here on the back. And uh, hit right down into it. Okay. There's that ridge that was running down through there. And we just took that ridge off and smoothed her out. Got another one here. Kind of worried about shooting down. I have a feeling it might break this off. So I'm not going to hit down that ridge. I'm going to come here from the other side. I'm going to raise this up and then knock it off. So let me raise it up. Okay, when I say I'm going to uh, raise an edge, this corn, this edge was down, down here, right about here. And I just chipped it off up to there. Remember, my center line is running right down through here. And now I've got a point to hit that's off the center line on the downhill side. And i got to take this hump off right here. So I'm going to hit from this high spot right here and take this hump off down through here. Okay? In theory... That's what I'm going to do. And again, strengthening up my edge. I really want these strong. I realize I'm rocking the whole camera and everything here. Move my pad over so it's not hitting the table. Okay, so see what I did? I really rounded that around. And I'm going to hit down this direction. Again, with a weighted bopper, I'm wrapping it with a piece of leather so you can see the flake and it just doesn't shoot down onto the floor. If this wasn't an instructional, I would just be whacking this and knocking these on the floor. And I got a pile of stuff at my feet. So we're going to hit it right here and hopefully take that big hump off. Okay? Otherwise known as a turtle back. Okay. So that's that hump I was talking about. And I just took a, whatever that thickness is off the top of that hump and thinned it out. Now notice it came over this other side and it hinged out on me. That's called a hinge or a stack or a step. Um, if that would have kept going, that would have taken width off. So I'm glad it stopped where it did because I can come back from this other direction and knock that stack, step, whatever you want to call that thing, off. Okay. <clears throat> So we're doing really good. We're starting to really reduce this thing down. Starting to actually look like kind of a knife blade. Kind of a... Uh, now I'm going to have to hit from the end on here. Now at this point, we don't have to worry so much about what we call end snap. But let me tell you, there's nothing any more disheartening than getting a piece nice and thin and just tap it on the end and have the thing break right in half, right in the middle. Just like that, because I tapped it on the end. The shockwave goes down, this end turns around, or it dives, and it snaps it right in half. It is a disheartening feeling. Okay, so we're going to shoot from the end. See how they've got this big hump here? I'm gonna take that off and shoot down through here, hopefully down that ridge. Maybe stop it right about there. So you can see the distance I want to shoot, which is about four inches. Again, support it on the end, lay it on my leg, because I don't want that shoot much further than right there. So I'm going to lay it on my leg where I want it to stop. And we're just going to pop it firmly. Okay. And that did exactly what we wanted it to do. You can see where it took that ridge right off. That's what we wanted to accomplish. Now I got another ridge right here. I'm going to hit this ridge and take that off. But first, I'm going to braid the heck out of it. Okay, same thing. Hit here, drive down. 
All right, didn't do it, go as far as I wanted to, but it took a lot of mass off the end there, and that's what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, I'm going to hit this again because we are past our center line. This is our center line right here, and this is over past it, so I can hit down this way with it. That's what I'm going to do. Again, like Curtis Smith was saying, a braid in that direction, and then round your edge, and hopefully this will shoot this whole bunch of stuff right here off. And again, we're past that center line, we're this side of it, so we're below, what's called below the center line. Okay, it crushed when I first hit it. But on my second hit, I come down into here. So that's about two inches, and that worked really good. I'm just going to take a little bit off and get us back closer to our center line, which is where we're at. Getting more of that preform shape. I'm going to hit here now and take off this ridge here. I'm not going to talk so much now. Just gonna start hitting. I took that ridge off that I just pointed to. I'm gonna hit right here and drive this off. You hear that kind of snap sound? That means that platform broke because I didn't braid it. Now we should hit more hollow sound. Hear that more hollow sound? And see that large flat, wide, 100 degree flake. It's spread out at about 100 degree right from that point of impact. That's beautiful. That's what you want. Okay. I'm going to hit up here and drive back. Get this. Remember that step? I'm going to take that step off right now. Okay. Here goes the step. Yep. Take it right off. And I step, <laughs> got a step going the other way. But we took that step off, so that's that's what I wanted to accomplish. All right, so this preform is getting pretty much where I want it to be. Now, I've stopped with a lot of these and just turned them into a, a decorative, like an ornamental necklace kind of thing. And a lot of people like them like, like that. I sell these on eBay. I'm starting to sell them on Etsy, E-T-S-Y. So, okay, so see how far that flake ran all the way down into there from where I had it up there. So we're starting to really begin to nice, do some nice thinning. Thinning, I'm gonna raise this edge up over here up just so I can Hit here, thinner out. There, nice thin flakes. They're all shearing and breaking up. Went to where that step is, but you can see my preform starting to look more preformy-ish. Now I've got a big hump here. I'm going to take this off. Kind of doing some blunders there. And you can see we're getting to, to a nice kind of preform shape here now. Getting to more of that flat look, which is what I'm, I'm shooting for. Got it. I'm past the center line over here, so I'm going to get that platform. Blend this out. this nipple right here I'm gonna knock that off okay to come in down there much nicer we've got a preform and it's still we had an about a nine inch when we started now we're down to about an eight inch 
So from that big rock I had, that's what I have left. I'm going to stop right there. I'm at almost 26 minutes. It's Greg Malone. You can get a hold of me, www.malonegreg.com. I mainly do blacksmithing, but I also do flint napping. Hope you have a great night. God bless.